Good morning, dear ones, and welcome back to the class once again. So we were on the question for human eye and the colorful word, and let's see the question number one from this chapter. Here the question says, explain why when the sun is overhead at noon it appears white, but when the same sun is near the horizon at sunset it appears red. So we have to give the basic the reason why this happens that when the sun is overhead it appears to be white in color and when the sun is at near the horizon it appears red in color so the reason being <coughs> every one of you is familiar with the phenomenon that when the sun is at the horizon near the horizon or you can say during the sunrise on sunset the sky appears to be red the reason is that I want to show you a diagram over here. This is near the horizon, I can say, and here are first of all the observer. <coughs> and here is the sun at noon time. At noon, the sun is overhead. At the time of sunset or sunrise, this is at sunset. Now see, <coughs> if you are going to compare the distance between the observer when the sun is overhead and the distance between the observer when the sun is near the horizon. So, comparatively if you are going to see the distance, this distance, this distance is comparatively greater than this distance. So, what happens, what is the role of distance over here and what is the role of atmosphere over here is that when you are traveling the larger distance to be covered from sun to you, to reach up to you, you have to travel a maximum distance and when you are traveling the larger distance at that time the shorter wavelength, I, I can say the blue color, the shorter, wa shorter wavelength light will be getting scattered away. Okay, and what is, the, uh, what is the reason why they are getting scattered? Because of the air molecules, the dust particles which is present in the atmosphere. This is the reason why the small wavelength light gets scattered when they travel in the sky. And this is the reason only why the sky appears to be blue in color. Why the sky appears to be blue in color? Because when the light is coming from sky to you, from the sun to you, what happens? It has to travel a larger distance and at that time, the shorter wavelength light is getting scattered due to the air particles like oxygen, nitrogen. These play a role in scattering. Okay. So now when the light is scattered, the blue light, most of the blue light will be scattered because it is a larger distance. So, over here the blue light will be scattered. Here also the blue light will be scattered. And if I talk about this position, this is comparatively a shorter distance. And so, here less blue light will be scattered, less blue light will be scattered and if the less blue light is being scattered that means the composition of white light which is composed of seven color, the sunlight is composed of seven color let me tell you. The white light which is coming from the sun is again composed of seven different colors which is the Vibgyur. 
वॉयलेट इंडिगो ब्लू ग्रीन येलो ऑरेंज एंड रेड इफ द ब्लू लाइट इज स्कैटर्ड दैट मीन्स द शॉर्टर वेव लेंथ लाइट आर गेटिंग स्कैटर्ड यू आर लेफ्ट विथ ओनली larger wavelength light that means red in color and this is the reason why if the blue light is scattered you are only left with red light color that is why the sky and the surrounding area will be appear to be red in color whereas if in this distance the less blue light is scattered suppose if there is no scattering of light that means now you are getting this complete composition and when you are getting this complete composition that means you are watching the white light that is why at noon time the sun is being appear to be white in color and this is the reason what you are going to write you have to consider the two points over here the distance covered while traveling and the scattering of light due to the atmosphere okay so these are the two points that you are going to cover in this particular question now let's see the next question let's move to the next one <coughs> next question says draw a diagram to show the refraction of light through a glass prism on this diagram mark incident ray emergent ray and angle of deviation let's do the first part firstly we have to make a prism okay now we have to make a angle of incidence a uh, sorry the incidence ray the emergent ray the angle of deviation first of all i should tell you when the light enters from rarer to denser now the examiner wants to check your knowledge about refractive index and the bending and going away from the normal of the refracted ray what happens when the incident light enters from rarer to denser from rarer to denser when light goes so the light goes bent towards the normal and this is the concept that we are going to use in making this particular diagram whereas when light travels from denser to rarer medium denser to rarer medium then it goes away from the normal now what i have written over here i am going to explain you with this particular diagram suppose some incident light is falling upon this prism this is a rare medium this is comparatively a denser medium because this is made up of glass glass is comparatively denser than the air now when the light is going from rare to denser medium what is going to be happen light will bend towards the normal so if i put a normal over here say this is m and this is m dash okay now what will happen light will bend towards the normal that means light is going to be bent towards the base of the prism so it has bent towards the base of the prism let me draw this okay now what happens when light has to travel it should move in a straight line like this should be the original path of this light but th that doesn't happen because the refraction process is going on now since the light has bent and now light has to travel from denser to rarer medium this is a denser medium this is rare medium this is also a rarer medium now light has to come from denser to rarer what will happen goes away from the normal let's put a normal over here say this is n and this is n dash <coughs> now see what will happen goes away from the normal this is a normal and now the light will go like this away from the normal let's say this is ab this is bc 
this is CD. Now here AB is your incident ray. CD is your emergent ray. Okay. Now see, in both the cases what is being happened? The light is going towards the base of the prism. So you have to always remember that whenever we are talking about a prism, light will be bending or going away from the normal. But in both the cases, they are going towards the base of the prism. You can see over here, here also the light is going bending towards the base of the prism. This is the base of prism, which we can say a PQR. So QR is the base of prism. And also when light is going away, that means out of the prism and in that case also it is bending toward the base of the prism. So this particular line is called as the incident ray. This particular ray is the emergent ray and now see the light should travel in the straight direction but it has bent with few angle so that means this is the deviation now this is called as angle of deviation and this is what we have to show in this particular diagram okay now let's move to the next question and let's see the next part of this question what is a rainbow? What are the two conditions necessary for the formation of a rainbow in the sky? Okay, let's first discuss about this. What is a rainbow? See, everybody of you is known about rainbow. Rainbow is a multicolored arc visible in the sky whenever the rain happens or it is being produced when the rain happened and sunlight is also present over there. So we can say rainbow is a multicolored arc and multicolor is composed of seven colors which we are going to discuss. Multicolor arc visible in the sky which is produced when the sunlight hits the water droplets. Or in other way you can write which is produced by the dispersion of light from the raindrops. You can write in many different language or many different forms. So this is one of the form that I have written over here but you can write in, in your terms also that it, it is produced due to the process of dispersion of light through the raindrops. Okay. Second thing what they are asking to us is what are the two conditions that is necessary for the formation of rainbow in the sky. So we are going to discuss those two conditions which is necessary for this formation. Two necessary conditions. First one is the presence of moisture in the sky which is first and utmost important presence of moisture in the sky and second thing is the presence of sunlight also but the sun should be at the opposite side that means the sun should be at the back of the observer sun should be at the back side of observer Let's see the formation of rainbow over here. 
see this is the rain drop ok. Now, here is the sun and here is the observer. See the sun should be at the back side of the observer. If I am making these two on the same side that means sun would be definitely at my back side. Now, the white light is coming from here and what will happen? This white light is now going to be dispersed in seven different colors with the help of a raindrop. This is a raindrop. Now, white light came and here in this position, let us see. Now, this is the rare medium and this water droplet which is made up of water definitely this raindrop is made up of water that means liquid which is comparatively denser than air. So, this is a denser medium. So, the refraction would be going to take place over here and light will bend towards the normal. So, light will slightly bend and the process that we are going to see over here is the dispersion. There will be the dispersion of seven different colors. I will be making it like this and you are now going to see the those seven colors over here. I am making this white, but these are composed of seven different colors. One end at one end there would be red color and at another end there would be blue color. So, this is how light is going to be scattered from a raindrop. And see, I have broadened it up, but this light will be like this, ok. So, this will be a raindrop and this will be a dispersion of light through the rainbow. Here will be your seven different colors, ok. Now, process this will be asked in the next question. Let us see what the next question says. The next question says what acts as tiny prism in the formation of a raindrop. So, what is acting as a tiny prism? I have shown you with the help of a diagram that this process where the dispersion is being happened, here the raindrop is acting as a little prism. That is why the process dispersion is being happened. So, we can say each individual drop of raindrop, a drop of water will be acting as the small prism. So, here I can say each tiny drop of rain will act as a small prism, ok. Now, name the process which is involved in the formation of a rainbow. See, I will be showing you with the help of this diagram. Here, first of all, the refraction happened. The white light got distributed in seven different color that means the process is dispersion and then those seven colors was reflected inside the rainbow that is what we call as total internal reflection, total internal reflection. Here the white light has came reflected and dispersed into seven colors. Those seven colors got reflected from here and those seven different color is visible to you because of the total internal reflection and refraction. So, if I have to write the process name, so first one will be, if I will be writing over here. First one will be refraction, then dispersion 
and then total internal reflection which I can say TIR total internal reflection so these are the process that is involved in the formation of a rainbow okay now the next question what are the seven colors seen in a rainbow so I, I already told you the seven different colors will be vibgyor so those vibgyor can be written as This is violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. So these are the seven different colors that you see in a rainbow. Okay. Now let us move to the next question and see what the next question asks. Question number 19 and this question says why do stars seem higher than they actually are illustrate your answer with the help of a diagram okay now let's do it okay first of all i need to ask you do you know that the stars seem us to be higher but in actual they are not have you ever seen or have you ever uh, felt that or have you ever uh, listened that this process let me tell you this process is again being happened due to the atmospheric refraction so if they are asking you in the one mark question that what is the process behind this then you can definitely write over there that atmospheric refraction so why do star appear to be higher so we can write it as this is due to the atmospheric refraction now the reason behind is that for example the sun is over here uh, the star is here but it appears to be here this is the actual position and this is the position that we observe the reason that I am going to tell you see when the light is coming from a denser medium to rare medium So you always know or when, when the light is coming from rare to denser or denser to rare there is going to be definitely a process of refraction. But see when the light is coming from star which is present in the space for example this is the space this is the space which is okay and this is the observer that means on earth now let me tell you that the uh, space where you are watching the star this is comparatively rare medium than this medium than the atmosphere of the earth so atmosphere of earth or we can say the near the horizon the air is optically denser comparatively denser than this air that is present in space uh, sorry the vacuum okay this is rare this is denser when the light is now coming from a rare medium to a comparatively denser medium then what will happen the light is showing to be refracted so due to so many refraction which is being happened during the passage when the light is being traveled from the star to the earth to the observer there will be so many refraction at each step there will be a refraction and due to that refraction the light is coming to be a in a banded form light will bend like this that i have drawn now light has been bent but the reason why the star appears to be here is the that our eye can only see the object from which the light is coming in the straight line so since the light is coming 
from this star in a straight line that is why we can say we can write light is coming from straight line. Our eye can only see those object which from which the light is coming to be a, in a straight line. That is why the eye observed the star to be here while in actual the star is here. So, this is the reason why the star appear to be higher. The process is only and only this atmospheric refraction. Okay? And that this is the reason behind this procedure. Now, let us see the another question. Explain why the sun can be seen about 2 minutes before actual sunrise. Draw a diagram to illustrate your answer. Again, the thing is same, but let us discuss it. why the sun can be seen about 2 minutes before actual sunrise. See let me firstly tell you that suppose this is a sun which is not a good sun because the shape is so irregular. Say this is the horizon. Do you know that sun rises only when the sun is above the horizon? So, that means if this is below the horizon, this is above the horizon. When the sun is above the horizon, that means sun has arisen. When the sun is below the horizon, that means it is not arisen yet. Okay. Here is the observer. See, now the light is coming from a denser medium to a rarer medium. Again, the process is being seen. If they are asking you why this is being happened, then it is atmospheric refraction. And why the atmospheric refraction is being happened? Because the light is traveling from comparatively de denser to comparatively rare medium. Okay. Now, again same thing will be happened over here. From this process, light is be to be bent towards the normal or away from the normal to reach up to your eye. But here, see, since here the sun is the sun is above the horizon. Let me tell you why there is a process of 2 minutes involved. See, when the sun is below the horizon and the atmospheric refraction is going on due to which the sun appears to be rising up 2 minutes before. Let us discuss the previous question. I told you that in the case of star, the, sky, uh, the star appear to be higher position, to be appear at higher position. Here also the case is same, the sun appears to be at higher position while the sun is not. The sun arises when the sun is above the horizon, when the sun is above the horizon. But in this case, if due to the atmospheric refraction, the sun appears to be at the higher position, that means at that time, sun has reached above the horizon and that also 2 minutes before. So, there is a difference of 2 minutes due to this atmospheric refraction and due to the air particles which is present in the atmosphere due to which atmospheric refraction is taking place and due to which the sun appears to be at the higher position that means we can see the sun above the horizon 2 minutes before while in actual it is slightly below the horizon. Okay. And also at the time of sunset the same procedure happened. The sun appears to be below the horizon, above the horizon while in actual it is below the horizon. So, in the total there is a time gap, there is a difference of 4 minutes. 2 minutes during the sunrise, 2 minutes during the sunset. So, there will be a time gap of 4 minutes. 2 plus 2 that means 4 minutes. That means, suppose if there will be no atmosphere, 
like in space if there will be no atmosphere around us there will be a time gap of 4 minutes in our life duration okay in the life duration of the sunrise and sunset and so this is the reason why the uh, so we have illustrated with the help of a diagram because in the diagram we have to show that here the sun has arisen when the sun is above the horizon and it is below the horizon okay so now let's move to the next question Okay, <coughs> Sunny is a car driver, read this question carefully, Sunny is a car driver working for Mr. Khanna, one day Sunny complained that he had difficulty in driving car because he could not see the distant traffic, that means car, buses, scooter etc. Clearly through, though he could see the nearby things clearly, though he could see, see he could easily see nearby objects, but he has difficulty in watching the distance, distant objects, in watching distant. Let's read the question again, complete it. The question is very easy, just the concept is hidden behind. The eye specialist doctor checked and tested his eyes with various machine and gave him the name and power of lenses to be worn as spectacles. Mr. Khanna paid for the required specs for the driver. By wearing these specs, the driver could now see even the distant vehicles and people on the road clearly. So what the question says, name the eye defect Sunny is suffering from. So how we can know that he is suffering from this defect or that? Due to these particular points. He can see the nearby objects clearly, but he has difficulty in watching the distant objects. That means he must be suffering from myopia. That means short sightedness. This is the defect of eye. There is basically three defects of eye. Myopia, hypermetropia, presbyopia. So myopia says you can see the nearby objects clearly and you will be having difficulty in watching the distant objects. Second case, hypermetropia, it says that you can see the far objects clearly and you will be having the difficulty in watching the nearby objects. Presbyopia is due to your old age that you cannot see the nearby and far objects clearly. Okay, So it is myopia, that means short sightedness. The second part, what could be the two possible reason for his eye defect? The two possible reason for his eye defect is, let's show you how it happens. This is your eye lens and when you are having myopia that means you cannot see the nearby, uh, you cannot see the far objects. The light that is coming from far objects will be forming the um, uh, image before the retina. That means it is not forming the image on the retina, it is forming the age image in front of the retina. This is the retina. This is why you cannot see the distant object clearly. So the reason being is high converging power of lens, high converging power of eye lens. That means short focal length. You can write over here short focal length or you can say high, fo high converging power. This is the first reason and the second reason is that the eyeball being too long. So we can say the eyeball being too long. Okay. So this is what happens in the case of myopia. Thirdly, what type of lenses do you think have been recommended for Sunny's packs and why? What are the lenses that we can re recommend for this? correction is since the converging power is increased so to make a correction we should decrease the converging power and so that means we can use our diverging lens so what will be the diverging lens that will be the concave lens 
So let's make this diagram again. We are using this concave lens. Here is the eye lens which is convex in nature and now since the light is coming from here, it will be diverged. it will be forming over here and this is the virtual image of object. So we have used the concave lens for the correction and now the reason why we have used is to reduce the converging power of eye lens. To reduce the converging power of islands. Okay, this is the reason. Now I have written okay. So this question has been completed. Now let's see what is the next question that is before us. Why is a normal eye not able to see clearly the objects closer than 25 centimeters? Now the question is related to your eye. Why is a normal eye not able to see the object which is closer than 25 centimeter? See, the normal eye can see the objects between 25 centimeter up to 25 centimeter. When you are bringing the objects to be closer than 25 centimeter, you will not be able to see the object clearly. The reason is that you are having your eye like this. This is optical center. <coughs> Here is the ciliary muscles. First of all, there is iris. This is iris. This is retina. That means the screen of your eye. This is cornea, the front part of your eye. This is eye lens which is then connected with the here is your ciliary muscles which is in red in color so this is ciliary muscles this is eye lens this is iris, this is pupil, this is suspensory ligament, now see what happens when the light is coming from the cornea that enters your eye, it went through the iris which adjusts the size of pupil. The question is why is not able to see the 25 more than 25 centimeter closer than 25 centimeter. So it, it is due to the accommodation of accommodation power of islands due to the accommodation power of islands. What do you mean by the accommodation power? This pupil the size of pupil is adjusted with the help of iris. When the light coming out is uh, coming entering your eye is small, the size of people will be expanded to fetch the more light. And when the light, the less light is coming into your eye, that means when you are entering a dim room, the people will be expanded with the help of iris so that more light can enter into your eye. Similarly, if I talk about the ciliary muscles, they get contracted or relaxed to do the accommodation when you are watching the far objects let me show you when you are watching the far objects this is the ligaments the ciliary muscles get relaxed firstly 
when you are watching the far object ciliary muscles get relaxed get relaxed and when the ciliary muscles get relaxed what happens this ligament get stretch ligaments stretch and when the ligament gets stretched the lens will be thinner in size because the lens has been stretched and so lens will be thinner lens thin means less converging power thin lens means less converging power less converging power this is how the adjustment of the eye lens is being done this is called as accommodation now this is the uh, case when the object is at far position when the object is at near position when the object is when the object is here what will happen the ciliary muscles get contracted ciliary muscles get contracted and when the ciliary muscles is getting contracted that means the ligaments will be loosened loosened like this i'll show you this is loosened and when the ligament is loosened that means now, now the lens has become thicker in size lens has been thicker the lens thicker means high converging power high converging power and that is how you are having the accommodation of your eye lens now the reason why you cannot see more than 25 cm because at that times all the power of your eye lens will be exhausted that means your ciliary muscles cannot make the eye lens to be more thicker your ciliary muscles cannot make the eye lens to be more thicker that means it cannot converge more it cannot help in converging the light more light so that is why you cannot see cannot muscles cannot make the lens more thicker this is the only reason and that is why i have make you understand the whole procedure so that you cannot forget the reason behind now let's discuss the next question what happens to the eye when you enter a darkened cinema hall from bright sunshine i gave you the reason that our retina is composed of uh, light sensitive cells rods and cones but that's a different procedure okay when you are entering a dim cinema hall then that means your pupil will get expanded with the help of iris so that you can fetch the more light when you are in a bright hall that means you iris will uh, ask yeah command command the people to lessen the size of people so that less light can enter your eye so this is all due to the contraction or expansion of the pupil so what happens to the eye when you enter a darkened cinema hall you cannot see the nearby objects what is the reason that it takes the accommodation of your pupil will take time this is the reason now differentiate between myopia and hypermetropia and what type of specs should be worn by a person having the defects of myopia as well as hypermyopia see myopia hypermetropia this is called as far sightedness this is short sightedness in this case 
द फार पॉइंट इज लेस देन इंफिनिटी इन दिस केस द नियर पॉइंट इज मोर देन ट्वेंटी फाइव सेंटीमीटर मोर देन ट्वेंटी फाइव सेंटीमीटर एंड इन दिस केस यू कैन सी द नियर बाई ऑब्जेक्ट क्लियरली इन दिस केस you can see the distant objects clearly and the corrective lens will be the convex lens concave lens and here the corrective lens will be the convex lens and you can make the diagrams also you will be having in your book you can make the diagram also if the question will be of higher mark okay so we have shown how does it help it will decrease the converging power of islands converging power of islands and it will increase the converging power of islands okay now last point says the near point of hypermetropic eye is 1 meter so near point means v that means where the image formation is taking place will be 1 meter or you can say 100 cm why i have written v that means image distance because the image formation is taking place what is the nature and power of the lens required to correct this defect so we have to find out the nature and power here see u will be given to be 25 cm because the object is for hypermetropic eye the object will be at 25 cm to find out the power we should firstly know the focal lens which is found using the lens formula so 1 by v will be 1 by 100 minus 1 by u will be 1 by 25 goes to 1 by f so you will be having minus 1 plus 4 equals to 1 by f so that means 1 by f is equals to 3 by 100 cm or you can say focal length is equals to 100 by 3 cm or it should be 1 by 3 meter isn't it now since you got the focal length in meter you can easily find out the power because power is nothing but 1 by focal length power will be 1 by focal length which is in meter and your power will come out to be plus 3 diopter you can make a calculation over here and you will see that power is coming out to be 3 diopter now see what they are asking us to be tell the nature what will be the nature since it is positive in nature that means it is a convex lens and also since in the question it is given this is a hypermetropic eye so that means it is definitely sure that we are going to use the convex lens so we have found the power, uh, power and the nature of islands so this is all from my side for this chapter we'll be solving the uh, the question of sources of energy in the different lecture till then you keep practicing